One of the easiest ways to drive your Pokemon business into the ground is to spend too much money on shipping. So we're gonna talk about that. What is going on Funhouse crew? Welcome back to the channel, TCG Funhouse, where we open up Pokemon cards and we spend way too much time packing, shipping, storing, and working in our collection, and separating bulk, and putting stuff all over the place. So we're going to tell you guys how we do it. Let's dive right in. If you're new to the channel, guys, and you clicked on this video because you're interested in starting your own Pokemon business and how to become a successful licensed reseller, make sure you check out the first two videos of the series on how to obtain your resale certificate and how to deal with distributors and expectations on allocations. And if you did watch our how to deal with distributors video, you notice that I mentioned one thing about profit margins being quite low on particular products such as booster boxes. So mishandling your shipping process on a booster box can bring your profit all the way from $4 to almost losing money. And if you're trying to run a successful Pokemon business, the last thing you want to do is lose money on every single sale because that does, doesn't make much sense, right? So the very first thing you want to do is you want to find a way to find the boxes and product that you need to ship goods at the cheapest possible price, and people will be actually surprised to know where you can find that, and that's on eBay, as well as some of the products on Amazon. So when you start selling sealed Pokemon card products, there's gonna be two items in particular that are gonna be the biggest bang for your buck and generate the most interest in your webpage, your website, or wherever you're selling your Pokemon cards at, and that's booster boxes and elite trainer boxes. And the reason for that, guys, is they hold the most value and they increase your order by the highest dollar amount as well, so you're more likely to get higher allocations the more money that you spend at your distributor. So let's go ahead and talk about what I like to use, and that is the six by six by six for the booster boxes themselves. And they are absolutely the perfect size to just squeeze a booster box right into with a little bit of bubble wrap, or this is a mailer that I use. I like to cut these mailers down, wrap the product, and shove it in the booster box right here, and it fits very snug no movement whatsoever. Every single person that's gotten a booster box from me has told me what great condition that it has come in um, and the packaging is phenomenal. Now, there are a little bit cheaper ways on different size boxes that you can use, but I do not want to skimp on my higher dollar products because I want to have good reviews so my customers come back and buy from me in the future. The next size box I want to talk about, guys, is the 9x7x4, which is the box size that is perfect for an elite trainer box and I do it the exact same way. I put the ETB in one of the nine and a half by 11 and a half uh, bubble mailers. You're gonna have to cut the side of it and then it'll go right in there and then it pops right in, super snug and secure and there's absolutely no issues, no movement, no nothing. And once again, guys, I've had nothing but good feedback on the way that I ship the boxes. Now, I'll also say the 9x7x4 is a little bit cheaper than the 6x6x6. So the booster boxes do fit in here as well. It's not quite as snug and secure, but you're talking about, you know, a couple pennies per box uh, in terms of saving money that way. I just bit the bullet and went for the 6x6x6. One, I think it looks better. It's a better product presentation, and I think it gives us a better name as a company. So those are the two most commonly sized boxes that I use. You can also fit uh, like partnership tins in the 9x7x4. You can fit regular sleeved booster packs in the 6x6x6 and the 9x7x4. Those two boxes really seem to be very versatile in shipping any uh, type of product that I need out to any of my customers. And again, guys, make sure you're price checking multiple different locations in order to find the better price point on your product because sometimes they're different. There are times where eBay is actually cheaper to buy from than Amazon, and then there has been times where Amazon was also cheaper than eBay, but I haven't found any other websites than those two places that have been cheaper uh, I found a good deal at walmart.com actually one time on the on the six by sixes, which you can see right here, walmart.com. Um, but they they went up in price after that, which is, it was odd to me. I don't know if they're overstocked or on clearance or something. I don't know. Um, but ultimately these right now are cheaper on eBay than they were on walmart.com. Um, but that's just, you got to keep searching because I'm telling you guys, if you're going to ship out a hundred boxes, if you can save five cents per box, over years, that's going to add up onto your profit margin, guys. 
because when you're dealing with a small profit margin per box anyway, you're gonna wanna try to maximize that as much as you can. And it's the same thing for the other types of products that you might need guys like pieces of like pieces of paper, like bricks of paper, uh, tape. Tape is a big one guys, the Scotch shipping. There are other ones, but again guys, I had a pretty good deal on this on Amazon Prime. There was a Prime deal on a big box of these. So I got like, I think 10 packs of these particular shipping tapes uh, for a very cheap amount. Um, so keep an eye out for deals. Always keep searching. Even if you're completely stocked, you might want to just check anyway because there's deals going on all the time, um, all over the place. Check your coupons. You're going to want to try to save money anywhere that you can. And another one, guys, stamps. Your regular envelope stamps. Now, this is not going to be for sealed product, obviously. This is more for selling singles and such. But stamps are a huge staple in shipping, and you want to buy what's called forever stamps because forever stamps always hold the value no, ma no matter what you buy them at. So if you buy stamps at $0.74 cents a piece or whatever they are right now, I don't even know, um, and they raise the price a week later to 75 the forever stamps that you bought for 74 are still going to work. So if you have a brick, a, brick, a roll, of forever stamps from 10 years ago that and they were 10 cents cheaper they're still going to hold the same value as the new stamps are and you can still use them and continue to talk about postage uh, a lot of people don't know this but actually for 15 cents they have what's called 15 cent stamps when you're dealing with plain letter envelopes and your package is over one ounce you're not going to be able to just use a stamp you're going to get a return item back saying that it was too light so every single ounce after your first ounce can actually just be used a 15 cent stamp. So a lot of people will just put two stamps on there. You're wasting money. You're wasting almost 50 cents by putting two stamps on one package just because it's at 1.1 ounces when really a 15 cent stamp would have worked and you can get these at your local post office. A lot of guys might be like 50 cents, whoop de doo When you're working with massive single sales and you're selling a lot and shipping a lot out all at one time, saving 50 cents on a stamp is huge to your profit margin. All right, so now let's go to another piece that a lot of people actually aren't aware of, and that's how do I pay for and ship my bigger, larger boxes? I'm just going to bring them down to the post office, pay what they tell me to pay, they're going to weigh them, and I'm going to pay full price on shipping. You guys are throwing money down the drain and you're flushing it down the toilet if that's how you're shipping your product. And there's a couple of websites that you can visit to lower that shipping cost to the same price as eBay by 15 to 20%, and that's pirateship.com and shipping.com. Both of those websites run deals, especially for commercial and retail businesses where you can uh, sign up for a bunch of shipping at the same time and it will lower the price. But ultimately, even if you're shipping a single I don't know, like a blue envelope or something like this, a bubble mailer, it's gonna be about 20% cheaper than if you were to go down to the post office. So if you're shipping anything out in a blue bubble mailer like this, doesn't have to be blue, I just like the color, but if you're shipping out anything in a bubble mailer like this, you can go up to a pound. Anything over a pound and your price point is going to go up. So to ship one of these out with a card, a couple of cards, something like that is gonna be $2.93 for me on pirate ship. Now, some of it does vary. If I'm shipping all the way to Washington or California and I'm in the state of Florida, it's gonna go up by like 20 cents or so. But for the bulk of the country, even from South Florida, I can ship for $2.93 with tracking and better protection than a standard white envelope. To where if I go down to the post office, they usually charge me about $3.60. All right, so now that we're talking about shipping out product and singles, let's go ahead and show you how here at TCG Funhouse, we send out our TCG player orders and our eBay orders. So the first thing you have to do is you have to find a price point that you're comfortable with sending plain white envelope or bubble mailer. And here at TCG Funhouse, that threshold is $15. And the reason why I chose $15 is because that is the exact same number that TCG Player requires to add tracking to any order. So people in the TCG community have come pretty familiar and expect tracking information on any purchases over $15 or more, even if you sell them on eBay, and that's just my experience. So now that we have our price point of $15, let's say that I sell this Hitmonchan holographic card from Evolutions right here for four bucks, okay? So $4, Hitmonchan Evolution. Obviously, if I send this in a bubble mailer with all my sleeves I'm about to show you 
and I'm going to pay for the $2.93 shipping, I'm going to end up losing money because you can't you can't charge for shipping on this. I mean, you could, but people aren't going to buy it. Um, and they're so used to getting free shipping on eBay. So because my card sold a little bit faster than other people who charge shipping, because I said I would ship it for free, let's show you how to get that cost down as much as possible so you can get this bad boy out safe, securely, and to its new owner. So the first thing we're going to do, guys, is we're going to make sure that the card is protected because there has been too many times that I have ordered a card on eBay and it comes like this and it drives me nuts. Drives me nuts. If you ship cards out that way, you might as well not even worry about opening a Pokemon business and just go back to eating dirt or whatever was happening before because you sent that card out that way. <laughs> now, again, that being said, because the card only costs $4, again, you don't want to load it up with a bunch of things that are going to bring your shipping cost all the way up to where you're still not making money on the card. So the first thing you're going to want to do is you're going to want to get penny sleeves, guys. These are very familiar for anybody that's been collecting cards, whether it's sports cards, Pokemon cards, Yu-Gi-Oh cards, Magic, it doesn't matter. Everybody's familiar with penny sleeves. They're very cheap. They're very usable. They fit all sizes. So now that we have our penny sleeve, guys, we're going to go ahead and we're going to throw our Hitmonchan into that penny sleeve, giving its first layer of protection. Next product up on the docket, guys, is the Ultra Pro 3x4 regular top loaders. Um, they're getting harder to come by and they're getting a little bit pricier in all honesty, but they're still the cheapest way to ship your card safe and secure without spending too much money. And we went ahead and we go ahead and we grabbed this top loader, guys. Let's go ahead and throw possibly. Let's throw our Hitmonchan into this top loader, guys. So now we have our second layer of protection on the Hitmonchan. So there are ways to lower your cost on the next part that I'm going to tell you, but I like to keep TCG Funhouse as singles professional, looking good and showing up the way that they should when they get to your door or in your mailbox. So a lot of people will go from this step here and they will apply some painter's tape to the top because you don't want the card to slip out the bottom during shipping because yes, the top loaders are nice, but you can see just from doing that a little bit, we got some slippage and the card can come out and actually get damaged in transit, which is the last thing you want because it's just gonna kill your ratings on eBay TCG player, and if you have a website, they're they're just not going to come back. So, but I don't like to go that route because one, it leaves the smudges on the top loaders. I hate that. If somebody ever ships me a card with painter's tape on it, I usually just throw that sleeve in the trash. It does do the job of protecting the card from moving, but I throw that in the trash. This is called a team bag, guys, also from Ultra Pro. And you can see what it does there is it seals the product to where even now, if it comes down to this side, there's no way that it's gonna actually leave the bottom of the top loader, so it has zero chance of being bent at that point. So anytime I sell a single, even if it's a dollar, dollar fifty, or three dollars, it's gonna go in a team bag just because I want that card to arrive safe and secure. And here's a good look at those Ultra Pro team bags. These have gone up in price significantly, guys. I was just shopping for them the other day, and to get 100 bags was almost $12 to $13. Now, that's on a price hike too, guys. So if you're thinking $12 to $13 for 100 bags is a lot, just do the math. How much is that really going to add to your shipping cost? Not that much. All right, now that we have our Hitmonchan ready to go, it is in triple protection. It is in the penny sleeve, the top loader, and the team bag. I also like to take it one next step, and that's to wrap it in a piece of paper. Now, again, you can give more protection than this, but remember, I'm only dealing with a three to four card, three to four dollar sale on this card, so a piece of paper is going to be sufficient for me. So I fold it up a couple of times, and I like to just create a little barrier here. It's really just a way to add another level of protection between the card and the envelope and the elements. So, yes, is it the most, you know, greatest looking thing in the world? No, but when you put it in the plain white envelope, because I'm under 15 bucks, so I need to keep this as cheap as possible. In that plain white envelope, it now has a nice little snug fit inside that envelope and it's not just gonna be flopping around, moving back and forth. Speaking of the envelope, guys, you want to make sure you invest in the privacy-tinted envelopes. You can probably save 20 cents 
on a hundred on a hundred envelopes by getting the non-privacy tinted but you don't want people to see what's inside you don't want them to get any of that vibe or anything if you like to leave a business card in there or anything like that people will be able to see what it is and they might steal it because pokemon cards are hot right now guys also there's two types of envelopes i just go for the standard basic envelope that have the seal here you can just get your little finger get a little cup of water you dab it you wipe it across this, you wipe it across that, and you seal it, and it is sealed for good. It is not going anywhere. The other type has the little pull string on it that releases the adhesive when you pull it off and stick it to the back. Those are fine as well. They might give you a little bit better seal, but they cost almost twice as much for 100 envelopes than the standard ones like this. And again, I've not had a single complaint when I ship my PWE sales out this way. All right, so now we're talking about the cards that sell for over $15. Obviously, you're going to want to add tracking and another level layer of protection on uh, cards that you sell over $15 because it's the right thing to do. And you don't want people claiming they didn't receive your product and requesting refunds. So I have not had this problem on TCG Player, guys. But if you've sold on eBay before, you know that there are people out there that are just trying to get one over on you. And they're trying to get some free cards. So you have to watch out for these people. And the best way to do that is to make sure that you're adding tracking and all kinds of security measures and protection measures to your product so they have less to complain about. And I learned this lesson the hard way when I first started selling on eBay, I sold a $27 card. I sent, I'm talking about like my third card I sold. I sent that sucker PWE, no tracking. The gentleman asked me for tracking. I said I didn't have it and he laughed at me and he asked for a refund the minute the day that thing ticked over and was supposed to be there, he asked for a refund, even though I'm pretty sure he got the card. And I was out the card, and I was out the $27. So I learned that lesson the hard way, so you guys don't have to. So talking about that $27 card, what I would do now is I would do the same thing. I would set up my card perfectly like this. Now, depending on the price of the card, if it was something of significance, $60, $70 card, I also like to add this little piece of styrofoam in there as well. So now we have an extra level layer of protection right there. And then I would just fold it up as so, just like I did before with that extra foam inside, just giving it a little more gumption and a little more protection. And now that we have that all sealed up and ready to go with the extra level of protection in there, we're gonna go ahead and we're just gonna stick it in this seven by four bubble mailer you can get these on ebay guys this is i've not find these anywhere than i do on ebay um, i like to get the blue because i think it stands out a little bit more um, things like that guys get what's best for you some people just like to go with straight manila uh, there's also white there's black there's all different colors i chose to go with the royal blue because um, I think it fits the brand good, and I think it gives a little bit of excitement when they open their mailbox and they see a big, bright blue mailer in there as opposed to just like a manila envelope one. And then when I'm selling specifically on eBay, I like to use eBay's tracking system because they do give you that 20% discount or so um, when you print from their website. So it still is really the best option available, and they give the tracking directly to the buyer so that leaves time for you that you're saving to sell more cards. And then I just cut it out and I tape it right across the top here and it is ready to go. I just peel this off, I seal it, and then it is ready to go, guys. You can put it right in your mailbox. If it's a higher priced card, I do like to bring them directly down to the post office to make sure it gets delivered securely and successfully. And yes, in case you were wondering, these seven by four envelopes are also a good size to send out PSA cards. Um, I do a pretty similar process, except of course I add more foam in it because I want more protection on my higher valued items. Now, all this information, of course, is subject to change. If you're watching this video six months or a year from after I release it, prices might be different. Um, websites may not carry this type of thing anymore. There might be better alternatives, better ways that we have figured out. But as of right now, filming this video, this is what I do. I save a pretty decent amount of money on shipping by doing these things. But at the same token, I don't compromise quality by going too cheap. And that could be a problem. Make sure you don't go too cheap on shipping. Get damaged product out there because then you're handing out refunds and you're getting customers that won't buy from you again in the future. So hopefully it was a pretty informative video for you guys. I really appreciate you checking it out. We do post Pokemon content three times per week, every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at 2 p.m., guys. So subscribe to the channel. Hit that notification bell if you want to make sure you don't miss any of those videos because they'll pop right up. We have a lot of fun. We open up booster packs. We talk about upcoming events. 
We talk about how to start a Pokemon business, guys. So we're having a lot of fun with this series. You guys seem to like it. I really appreciate all the love and support. Memberships are active, guys. We are selling sealed product as well. And you guys know Shining Fates is coming down the pipeline. Everybody that's an official TCG Funhouse member on our YouTube channel gets priority over pre-ordering and ordering Shining Fates sealed product and battle styles. But once again, guys, thank you so much. I hope to see you in the future. If you're interested in some Shining Fates or Battle Styles pre-orders, please hit me up on Instagram or Twitter in my DMs. I have a lot of messages in there right now, guys. I am filtering them as best as possible, so please give me some time. With that being said, I'll see you in the future.